welcome to More Tools and Sense. This is the show where I take some old garbage and I turn it into some completely different garbage. Today, we're going karting. Wah! It's an electric go-kart, and yes, it got a little bit out of hand, but Halloween was coming up, and I just couldn't help myself. As you can see, there's a lot to it, and it took a while to build, so let's go ahead and get started. Well, quite a few years ago now, I built my daughter a Halloween costume. And there are still a good number of bits of it left over, namely this front steering rack and axle. And it's been kicking around for a little while, and I feel like I need to do something with it. And now that the kids are a lot older, it definitely needs to be a lot stronger before we go on. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of the steering arms that it had before and replace them with these much beefier units. The original system ran off of servos for a large remote control car, and those steering arms are going to be much too weak for a larger hand-operated system. Well, next up, I'm going to be building a rack and pinion steering system from scratch, because I asked myself, what's the most difficult and convoluted way to go about this? And then I decided on that. I already had this gear left over from a previous project, so I only needed to build the rack for this system. I took a large piece of bar stock and cut it on the lathe. Alright, well next step is to get these wheels mounted on the axle. I don't have an axle yet, and I need a hub to go on the end of the axle. So first I'm going to use these brake discs that I got from Rock Auto by accident, because about every fifth item they send you is the wrong thing. Um, but they should fit on these wheels. Now, I can't tell yet, because the hub is too large and will not fit inside the centering ring. But we can fix that with a lathe. In order to hold the axle, I got these pillow blocks, which are not as comfortable as they sound. They also didn't fit on the axle, so I needed to turn it down just a few thousandths to make them slide on there nicely. Now an axle is not of much use unless you can actually turn the thing. I ordered this sprocket, which matches the one that's already on the electric motor I'll be using, and provides about a 10 to 1 reduction. Now I could have just welded the sprocket right onto the end of the axle, but if I did that you wouldn't be able to remove them from the pillow blocks if necessary. So instead I made this adapter which bolts inside. With the axle done-ish, I needed a place to bolt it down, so I started building the rear section of the cart's frame. Now it's time to mount the hubs on the end of the axle, and unfortunately I had the common problem of my shaft not having enough girth. In order to fix that, I'm going to cut several spacers and place them inside the hub. I checked it for wobble on the lathe, and then I welded it up with a lot of filler material. Next, I cut my axle in half, because I want that adapter and sprocket to go in the middle. A nice looking setup. Too bad that the sprocket doesn't actually fit there, and I'm going to need to cut space in order for it to exist. Well, 
Well, now I need to weld the frame back together, and I only ended up welding one side together using this angle iron. For the other side, I made a section that can be bolted in and then removed. In my mind, for some reason, it would be easier to remove this section than to undo the links in the drive chain. In practice, it's 100% not easier. Now that the frame's back together, I need to drill some holes where the pillow blocks mount. And since these are big holes, I'll be using the big drill press. And look at that, it works, pretty much. Now that those parts have passed all the subsequent inspections, it's time to build a frame. And for that, I will close my mouth and you can watch this montage. Now that I have a frame and it's going to hold my weight and it rolls, it's time to get back to building that steering rack. I had already built the rack and now I needed something for it to slide back and forth on. Job done. Next, I needed to make a bushing to hold the steering column and turn the gear back and forth. I used this polyurethane bushing that was left over from an automotive project, drilled it out and turned it down a little bit, fit it inside of this piece of steel tubing. I needed something to hold the bushing in place, so I made this metal bracket and then welded these bolts onto the steel tubing. And now with the gear on the end of the steering shaft, I just need something to hold that whole assembly in place. Well, it's sitting up a little high, but not to worry about that. It's all bollocks anyway. Well, here's the thing. Turn the steering wheel left, wheels turn right. Turn the steering wheel right, wheels turn left. Uh, I guess I'm gonna have to flip this upside down somehow. Didn't think about that. Okay, so we're gonna lower the steering shaft and then put that rack up on top instead. Much better. 
But what good is a steering rack without a steering wheel? Old motorcycle chain? Check. Vintage retro 70s style? Double check. Gonna need more bushings, this time just made out of old pipe couplers. and it turns, kinda. It doesn't turn very well because the rear axle is locked together so you don't really get any slipping. So I'm gonna have to do something about that. It might also need some brakes. Brakes. <laughs> now as I mentioned, this rear axle is locked together and that means that both sides of the hub always turn together. That makes it really tough to go around corners, but it does give it better traction. In order to fix that, what I'm going to do is separate the axles. They're already two separate pieces. Move this over and make it so that the motor only spins one side of the axle. The other side will be able to spin independently. But then it'll only be one wheel drive. Well, we can fix that. Well, it's a good thing that I left the axle able to be disassembled. I was able to take all that apart and clearance more room for the gears. Alright, well now we have two separate gears, two separate hubs, and they can move independently, so it's going to turn a lot better. Unfortunately, the frame rails are too narrow to fit two motors in there, so I'm going to have to cut this out and move some bars around and kind of start over, which is lame. But what you going to do? Two motors means two chains, not the wrapper. Oh, the symmetry. Time to make more motor mounts. At least I can make two at once. Cut some speed holes for lightness. And now it's dual motor, just like a Tesla. Well, I was gonna put these wheels and tires on the back, which are actually very small rims off of an MG, um, because I had them sitting around. But they're a little bit bigger and a good bit heavier than they need to be. So I'm switching for some almost free golf cart tires, which are a lot lighter uh, and they're a little bit smaller in circumference too, which means it's going to gear the engines down a little more. It's still geared a little too high, so this will help. And honestly, I'd like them to be a little bit smaller still, uh, but because of the way I built the rear axle, you can't have rims any smaller than this. And uh, any go-kart tires all come on smaller rims. So these actually seem to work pretty good though. They're nice and fat. It should look pretty good on the back, I think. And so we'll do them up. So next up, I need to build a floor pan, install the pedal, and then work on some rudimentary wiring. Well, 
second test drive is both a success and a failure. Uh, it's a success because this thing is much faster and it turns way better. It's a failure because the chains fell off almost immediately. Chains fell off. But that's mostly because I never finished the engine mounts and I kind of rushed it out there to try it out. So I need to finish the engine mounts with another crossbar. I need to move the batteries around and finish up all the wiring, figure out how the brakes are gonna work, and maybe make a real seat, because this guy's not quite cutting it. Well, I managed to screw it up with the bead roller. I had the rollers uh, not lined up perfectly in the center, and so it cut on my last pass when I was getting a little too aggressive. So now this is all split apart. So now I'm gonna break out the TIG welder and try to weld that back together. This is thin aluminum and I'm not great at TIG welding, so let's see if it happens. Well, this bit of welding actually went pretty well, but don't worry, I won't fail to fail. All right, well, I have finished welding up the seat poorly, uh, but that's okay, because I need the practice, and this is a good way to get it. You won't really see this, and it doesn't have to hold water or anything, so it's a good time to practice your welding skills, or lack thereof. So yeah, it's a good thing I'm getting this welding practice in. I pretty clearly need it. I'm making these adjustable seat slider rails out of good old steel, so I can go back to the idiot gun. After it's all welded together and bolted down, now it needs a retainer pin to keep the seat from sliding. And what's this? Why, it's a new tool that was definitely bought out of 100% necessity. It's gonna go so much faster with all these speed holes. But it's not all about speed. We're building with luxury in mind, too. And with the seat done, it's time to turn our attention back to the wiring and, first of all, protecting it. Up until now, the cart has had no brakes and no reverse. I'm going to attempt to solve both of those problems with one elegant solution. And fail. Different. 
but what I do succeed at building here is a reverse switch with two separate switches, one left and one right. I'm able to disconnect these two switches at a future time, and then I will be able to spin one wheel forward and one wheel backward. Okay, so the next major problem is that the front hubs are too small and they're a little bit floppy. There's also no brakes going to the front tires. So I'm gonna fix both of those problems with one solution. Off of eBay, I ordered these cheap like UTV hub kits and they also come with disc brakes as well as calipers. This is all a complete kit, it was about 100 bucks. Now I just have to adapt it and make it work and then find some wheels and tires that fit on it that aren't too big. Well, I just have to undo the only bit of work that was done before I started, and not so bad. The next problem to tackle is the fact that those reverse switches I installed keep burning out. I bought these heavy-duty relays to replace them, but they run off 12 volts, so I need a converter to install as well. And now that I've installed those new hubs, I need new wheels and tires, and any that are designed to fit on those UTV hubs are massively too big. I bought these trailer tires instead and drilled them out to fit. These tires are also much too big, but I'll worry about that after I install the brakes. I spent some time contemplating how to make a fancy pedal setup that would also press in on the brake actuator, but then I thought to myself, what are feet if not just hands with no fingers? seems to be running pretty well. The throttle, the brake, and the reverse are all working flawlessly. Last test drive, no problems at all. So we just gotta add a few more details and we can take it out on the town. going to do it for today's episode of More Tools and Sense. As you can see, the electric go-kart is finished. I've added many accessories and these low-profile tires up front. Forward and reverse now work pretty well, as do the brakes, and nothing even fell off, including my lovely mustache.
<laughs> well, thanks for watching and hopefully you've enjoyed this ridiculous build. Tune in next time where we'll build something even dumber. <laughs>